Hello everybody and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today I have a quarter sheet of Stonehenge Aqua in front of me. It is a 100 pound, sorry 140 pound cold press, 100% cotton. I'm going to saturate it with water and then we're going to start painting a watercolor landscape. So this is going to be an imaginary scene, um, just kind of a stream of consciousness uh, painting. We will focus on going from back to front in the picture plane. We'll focus on uh, wet and wet and then dry brushing and we'll focus on tonal values. So even though it's stream of conscious, there's a lot of stuff that we're going to, um, to work on and play around with this. That right there is a little bit of uh, Prussian blue that I had used the other day. Okay, so I have a medium hake brush. I'm going to use raw sienna to kind of make up the scene. We'll start in the sky. The horizon will be about here. And then we'll shift up to ultramarine blue, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, compositionally, we'll have a stream. Let's do an S shape composition. There we go. And then we'll bring this mass here. This will be darkened with a shadow to prevent the eye from going off the page. And we'll grab some ultramarine blue. Now ultramarine blue and raw sienna will give us a, um, a gray. So I'll put in some pure blue. So I really prefer not to wash off the hake brush. We'll get some interesting color in the sky. bring that blue down to our water and we'll grab some burnt sienna Then I'm going to mix my very most background color for the land. So this is light red oxide and ultramarine blue. I didn't clean off the brush, but this is going to give me kind of a muted purple. This is going to be for trees and masses back here. Now, what I'm doing is lifting up the binder clip, pressing down the paper, just to help stretch the paper. Um, it starts buckling. Grab some pure raw sienna, I'm still wet and wet. This is going to be the formation of trees. Doing this is going to give me a soft effect, and then when it dries, I'll go harsher over it, so I'll get a contrast there. Maybe a group of trees here. See these trees about there. That'll be the base of them. I could feed in a lizarin, 
So I'll stick to mostly the Ron Rance and Hake uh, palette. Picture the colors that I'm mentioning and using. If I use anything outside of it, I'll say the name as well, and then I'll point out that I went outside. All right, different densities. here okay um, let's see if there's any other colors I want to feed in or any other techniques before doing a dry off I'll grab some lemon yellow Got a little texture here I always like paints gray on the edge of water. And that dark will help prevent the eye from going off. It will lighten up whenever I use the blow dryer though. Feed in a little bit of darks that'll lighten up. You could even do a little darks here. All right, I'm gonna pause the camera for a dry off. So see how things lighten up once I turn it back on. All right, so took out the number four rigger. This is just good for um, lines and when you need more pigment to kind of stay on. And I'm going to map out branches in these trees. This is a mixture of burnt umber and ultramarine blue. While I do this, it's a good time for me to say you know, please uh, like, subscribe, follow. Um, I do have a Patreon if you would like to consider supporting this channel. Um, I have exclusive content on there. And if I ever paint from a photograph, I also have those photographs on there. So I try to put resources uh, there for you all to use. Also, um, I always try to let you all know that you are more than welcome to follow along with the tutorial. And if you'd like to put your own name to it, that's fine. You could sign your name on it. And uh, you have my express permission to sell anything that you do from one of my tutorials. I'm just using this uh, rigger on the side just to build up this texture here in a dry brush fashion. I'll grab the hake, some raw sienna. Stippling. And now we get a contrast between that softness and a little bit more texture in front. And I'll bring up some grass in front of it. We have a little bit of lemon yellow and ultramarine. Push a little bit of green. So far, no brush washing has taken place.
above and below. Now we could come over it with some more trees. Ultramarine blue and the burnt umber for a nice dark mix. You see how it's um, thicker trunks. Since the light is coming from behind here, it's going to cast a shadow back. Kind of help ground it in place. Do another tree that comes up behind it. And even another one. Start building up that side. Then on the other side, let's put a tree in right here. kind of be a thicker trunked tree. Uh, dry brushing sideways to get that reflection, intensifying that edge. Then, it's going to cast a shadow as well. Just pushing a little bit of that paint there. Grabbing the number one rigger, this will let me put thinner branches. Just flicking them out. Now well, let's put some foliage for them, some raw sienna. Grab a teeny bit of water just to lift some pigment up. I put some fresh pigment out, but some of these are dry on the palette. Here's some light red oxide. Red oxide. Grab a little bit of Payne's Gray. It's kind of dry brushing at this point, but we're also going into some areas that we still have wet. So, um, has multiple, uh, I don't know, evident to know what you'd call it at that point, if it's wet and wet slash dry brush. So just be aware. Then we can come back over that. Some branches. So going for that 3D effect. Now I'm just grabbing some Payne's Gray, it just makes it easier. Like a little bit of long parts here. Okay, let me do a pause for a quick dry off. 
Okay. Now, I always do like foreground trees, so I think I might have some come up from here. So burnt umber, ultramarine, and Payne's gray. I think I'll bring it right out of here. We do one alongside it. The this paper is 11 by 15, so it's a quarter sheet. And if it was to be matted, it would mat to a little bit less than 11 by 14. So some of this might get covered up if it was to be matted. Um, but I do always suggest painting to the edges of the paper so that you kind of create the whole scene. And plus, whenever you put a mat over it, I really don't like whenever you cut it in too tight and you can't um, you can't uh, remove the white from it. If that makes sense, you'd have like white right here. Put some dark down at the base to help it sit in place. Just flicking them up. And see if we could grab some color. I haven't even wiped the hake off. There's some lemon yellow. It's all in the interest of uh, demonstrating and relaxing and having to try try and have a good day. Hope you all enjoy, by the way. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you follow along, I would love to see your results. Uh, I'm on numerous social medias, so uh, feel free to contact me. I don't mind talking talking art or if you have questions or need help with anything. I think we'll do a little bit of scraping. Just the edge of a card. Let me throw it down a little bit darker. Okay. Um, let's see, one last try off and we'll sign it and look and see how it is underneath the mat. All right, so we'll sign it once I find a pen for signing. I like using the Micron pens. And then place a mat over it. By the way, here's my water. It's a little cloudy because I had a little bit of white gouache left over on the side that didn't get washed off. Just to kind of, not really brag, but I guess there's a little bit of bragging rights that I didn't clean the brush at all. And the paper towel was just used to wipe the palette. All right, now let's lift this up and see. And there you go. Hope you enjoyed, once again, thanks for joining us at Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Please like, subscribe, follow, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.